This is never easy to hear, but you've been lied to. You don't have to be smart to do well in school. You have been misguided when it comes to studying because the education system somehow expects you to learn everything, although we're never actually taught how to. This can be just a little problematic when so much of your life is spent trying to study. Who am I and why should you take advice from me? Well, having finally beaten public exams, I managed to get straight A's and A styles throughout GCSEs and A levels, and I'm now studying dentistry. So I've learnt a thing or two when it comes to studying. I think I've probably experimented with enough study techniques to last me 10 lifetimes. I've also seen so much conflicting advice when it comes to studying, which just makes it so much harder than it needs to be. To this day, I still see so many people do so much wrong when it comes to to studying and still get messages from students like yourselves asking how to study. So with that being said, I'll save you time by condensing everything I've ever learned down into this video so you can avoid the most common studying myths. By far one of the most common questions I've been asked is how long should I study for each day? I figured that the best way to answer this is to tell a little story. Once upon a time there lived two bakers, Lily and Max. Lily believed in working long hours and always tries to bake as many pastries as possible without focusing much on quality. Max however likes to prioritise sourcing quality ingredients and spends a little time each day on improving his technique. During a grand town festival, both Lily and Max showcased their pastries. Lily's table was filled with an abundance of treats, but some were overbaked while others lacked flavour and finesse. On the contrary, Max's display was modest, but each pastry was a masterpiece, perfectly baked, delicately flavoured and beautifully presented. As the townspeople tasted the pastries, they marvelled at the quality and taste of Max's creations. They appreciated the effort and expertise that went into each pastry, recognising that quality indeed surpassed quantity. The moral of the story and the answer to how long should you study is that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how long you study if you're not doing it correctly in the first place. Your 12 hours of revision may be equivalent to someone's two hours of hard work. Don't be intimidated by your peers and please don't compare yourself to those studying for hours online because it's literally their job. Everyone is different so if you're happy with how you're currently progressing then maybe you don't need to change anything. Now this sort of ties in with the first point in that there is no best study method that suits everyone. Sometimes it can be confusing because I'm sure if you do a few searches online then you'll find a plethora of detailed videos explaining why a certain study technique is the best or most evidence-based or something else along those lines. And even though I'm sure that they will give very useful advice, you have to remember that everyone is different. Some people may like spamming out flashcards, some people will like creating questions for themselves and others will even prefer to spend hours making pretty detailed notes. If you found something that works for you then you're already in a great position. You're ahead of so many people who are trying out everything they can to find out which method works best for them because I was once in that position too. And if you haven't found something you like yet, I would recommend thinking outside education and asking yourself what you normally like to learn and how you normally do it. So let's give an example and say a new game has just come out and you're trying to figure out the best way to play the game. Maybe you're not sure how the controls work, maybe you're not sure what weapon is best. Well then since you don't know, what are you going to do? Are you the type of person to carry on playing the game even if you don't know much about it and then learn from trial and error? If this is the case, then maybe we can relate this to our studies by using past papers and questions. Since you initially don't know the answer, then you'll just have your best go at it. And after you mark it, you're gaining experience about how to answer these questions, like how will you play the game. After doing this over and over and over again, you will make this stick into your brain. And hopefully you won't make the same mistakes again. Or referring back to the game analogy, are you the type of person to enjoy watching other people play the game and then let them teach you so you don't have to go through the whole process of you learning how to play by yourself? If this sounds like you, I would recommend watching videos teaching you the content that you're currently learning in school. And what you can do is that you can pair this along with with your own notes and own revision sources on the side. You see, just with this simple analysis of how we act in our daily lives, you can see how your brain thinks and therefore how you like to learn. There's always someone in school who thinks that they're not smart enough. Do not ever for a second believe that you can't achieve what you want to achieve. Doing well in school is not about how smart you are. I like to think of exams as a game and there is most definitely a way to beat them. Exams are not a test of your literal intelligence. They're more a test about how well you can use the information you've learnt and apply this to memorise these mark schemes and to find patterns within these past paper questions. Now obviously you can't expect good results if you're not willing to put in the work, but make sure that the work you're doing is effective and relevant to the exam. Because although the theory behind school is to learn and understand all the information, 
The way we actually determine our smartness, I guess, is by the final grade based on our exam. And I do agree with you that this is a flawed system, but the game is the game. Never think that you are not smart enough. I promise you that anyone, and I mean anyone, can be successful if they do the right things. Taking notes is useless. Or so I thought. I've sort of changed my mind about note taking and its effectiveness, and I also think that all study techniques can be useful in one way or another depending on how you use it. A lot of the current studying evidence has shown that the most effective way to revise is by active recall and spaced repetition, which means testing yourself at recurring intervals so you remember the information better for next time. On the other hand, passive learning generally requires less effort. This involves things like making notes, reading summary sheets, and things which don't require so much attention, such as listening to a video in the background, for an example. Everyone always seems to hate on passive learning, specifically note-taking, but I've seen this to be used really well by some people, and for them it's all they need to do to get the highest grades. I think the confusion lies in how you should actually note-take to make it worth your time. Now, if you mindlessly copy out your lecture word for word without thinking what you're writing, I can agree that it will be pointless. What you need to do is first read and understand what you're learning about so you have a brief overview of the most important content you need to know. Then, instead of copying, rewrite each important point in your own words whilst trying to summarise it in a way which is both easy to read and memorise. Maybe think about using weird acronyms or highlighting the points you want in unusual colours. And I think this is good because I found that usually the more unique the notes are, the easier it is for you to actually remember it. By doing all of this, you're actively engaging your brain by turning this previously passive studying technique into something a lot more active. And if you pair this with space repetition, you can't really go wrong. So my tips for how to study effectively are quite simple. Firstly, find and use a study technique you enjoy, because if you enjoy something, it makes it easier for you to start doing it more often, and starting is usually the hardest part when it comes to studying. Secondly, try to get a big picture about what you're learning before learning all the nitty gritty details about it. From the Pareto Principle, about 20% of the work you put into studying will achieve 80% of the results. Think about that for a minute. Let's say you normally study 10 hours for an exam. Well, this principle says that even if you study studied 2 out of these 10 hours, you would have still achieved 80% of the same results. Now don't take this too literally, because as with all things, the results will vary. But what we can get from this is that a lot of our time is spent learning these minor insignificant details, which in reality don't add too much to our final results. So use this to adjust to your own revision. The next thing is to remember to incorporate space repetition. This is when you go over all the content you've learned every once in a while, so you refresh your memory and make sure you don't forget it. Don't get overwhelmed with how many resources you have available to you. If you found something really good like a few YouTube videos, then use that completely. Just find something decent and carry on with that. And finally, when you are taking notes or learning content for the first time, it's generally easier for your brain to remember things in terms of relationships and connections. So try your best to understand every concept with a purpose and a result. Ask yourself why are you learning this? What is the most important thing to remember? And how does this fit in with the larger picture? Hopefully these tips help you and you've learned something new about studying. It's a long and not so simple process, but it can be made easier if we do the right things. As usual, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.